Star Trek is an American space opera media franchise based on the science fiction television series created by Gene Roddenberry. The first television series, simply called Star Trek and now referred to as the original series, debuted in 1966 and aired for three seasons on NBC. It followed the interstellar adventures of Captain James T. Kirk, William Shatner, and his crew aboard the Starship USS Enterprise, a space exploration vessel built by the United Federation of Planets in the 23rd century. The Star Trek canon includes the original series, an animated series, five spin-off television series, the film franchise, and further adaptations in several media. In creating Star Trek, Roddenberry was inspired by the Horatio Hornblower novels, the satirical book Gulliver's Travels, and westerns such as the television series Wagon Train. These adventures continued in the 22-episode Star Trek, the animated series and six feature films. Five other television series were eventually produced. Star Trek The Next Generation follows the crew of a new Starship Enterprise, set a century after the original series. Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager are set contemporaneously with The Next Generation, and Enterprise is set before the original series in the early days of human interstellar travel. The most recent Star Trek TV series, entitled Star Trek Discovery, aired exclusively on the digital platform CBS All Access. The adventures of the Next Generation crew continued in four additional feature films. In 2009, the film franchise underwent a reboot set in an alternate timeline, or Kelvin timeline, entitled simply Star Trek. This film featured a new cast portraying younger versions of the crew from the original show. Their adventures were continued in Star Trek Into Darkness 2013. Its sequel, Star Trek Beyond 2016, was released to coincide with the franchise's 50th anniversary. Star Trek has been a cult phenomenon for decades. Fans of the franchise are called Trekkies or Trekkers. The franchise spans a wide range of spin-offs including games, figurines, novels, toys, and comics. Star Trek had a themed attraction in Las Vegas that opened in 1998 and closed in September 2008. At least two museum exhibits of props travel the world. The series has its own full-fledged constructed language, Klingon. Several parodies have been made of Star Trek. In addition, viewers have produced several fan productions. As of July 2016, the franchise had generated $10 billion in revenue, making Star Trek one of the highest-grossing media franchises of all time. Star Trek is noted for its cultural influence beyond works of science fiction. The franchise is also noted for its progressive civil rights stances. The original series included one of television's first multiracial casts. Star Trek references may be found throughout popular culture, from movies such as the submarine thriller Crimson Tide to the animated series South Park. Topic. Background Topic. Conception and setting As early as 1964, Gene Roddenberry drafted a proposal for the science fiction series that would become Star Trek. Although he publicly marketed it as a western in outer space—a so-called, wagon train to the stars. He privately told friends that he was modeling it on Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, intending each episode to act on two levels, as a suspenseful adventure story and as a morality tale. Most Star Trek stories depict the adventures of humans and aliens who serve in Starfleet, the space-born humanitarian and peacekeeping armada of the United Federation of Planets. The protagonists have altruistic values, and must apply these ideals to difficult dilemmas. Many of the conflicts and political dimensions of Star Trek represent allegories of contemporary cultural realities. Star Trek, the original series addressed issues of the 1960s, just as later spin-offs have reflected issues of their respective decades. Issues depicted in the various series include war and peace, the value of personal loyalty, authoritarianism, imperialism, class warfare, economics, racism, religion, human rights, sexism, feminism, and the role of technology. Roddenberry stated, By creating a new world with new rules, I could make statements about sex, religion, Vietnam, politics, and intercontinental missiles. 
Indeed, we did make them on Star Trek. We were sending messages and fortunately they all got by the network. If you talked about purple people on a far-off planet, they the TV network never really caught on. They were more concerned about cleavage. They actually would send a sensor down to the set to measure a woman's cleavage to make sure too much of her breast wasn't shown. Roddenberry intended the show to have a progressive political agenda reflective of the emerging counter-culture of the youth movement, though he was not fully forthcoming to the networks about this. He wanted Star Trek to show what humanity might develop into, if it would learn from the lessons of the past, most specifically by ending violence. An extreme example is the alien species, the Vulcans, who had a violent past but learned to control their emotions. Roddenberry also gave Star Trek an anti-war message and depicted the United Federation of Planets as an ideal, optimistic version of the United Nations. His efforts were opposed by the network because of concerns over marketability, e.g., they opposed Roddenberry's insistence that Enterprise have a racially diverse crew. Mythology The central trio of Kirk, Spock, and McCoy from Star Trek, the original series was modeled on classical mythological storytelling. There is a mythological component to pop culture, especially with science fiction. It's people looking for answers, and science fiction offers to explain the inexplicable, the same as religion tends to do. If we accept the premise that it has a mythological element, then all the stuff about going out into space and meeting new life, trying to explain it and put a human element to it, it's a hopeful vision. All these things offer hope and imaginative solutions for the future. Topic. History and production Topic. Timeline Topic. Beginnings In early 1964, Roddenberry presented a brief treatment for a proposed Star Trek TV series to Desilu Productions, calling it, "...a wagon train to the stars." Desilu worked with Roddenberry to develop the treatment into a script, which was then pitched to NBC. NBC paid to make a pilot, The Cage, starring Jeffrey Hunter as Enterprise Captain Christopher Pike. NBC rejected The Cage, but the executives were still impressed with the concept, and made the unusual decision to commission a second pilot, Where No Man Has Gone Before. While the show initially enjoyed high ratings, the average rating of the show at the end of its first season dropped to 52nd out of 94 programs. Unhappy with the show's ratings, NBC threatened to cancel the show during its second season. The show's fan base, led by B.J. O. Trimble, conducted an unprecedented letter-writing campaign, petitioning the network to keep the show on the air. NBC renewed the show, but moved it from primetime to the Friday night death slot and substantially reduced its budget. In protest Roddenberry, resigned as producer and reduced his direct involvement in Star Trek, which led to Fred Freiberger becoming producer for the show's third and final season. Despite another letter-writing campaign, NBC cancelled the series after three seasons and 79 episodes. Topic. Rebirth After the original series was cancelled, Paramount Studios, which had bought the series from Desilu, licensed the broadcast syndication rights to help recoup the production losses. Reruns began in the fall of 1969 and by the late 1970s the series aired in over 150 domestic and 60 international markets. This helped Star Trek develop a cult following greater than its popularity during its original run. One sign of the series' growing popularity was the first Star Trek convention which occurred on January 21-23, 1972 in New York City. Although the original estimate of attendees was only a few hundred, several thousand fans turned up. Star Trek fans continue to attend similar conventions worldwide. The series' newfound success led to the idea of reviving the franchise. Filmation with Paramount Television produced the first post-original series show, Star Trek, the animated series. 
It ran on NBC for 22 half-hour episodes over two seasons on Saturday mornings from 1973 to 1974. Although short-lived, typical for animated productions in that time slot during that period, the series garnered the franchise's only «Best Series» Emmy Award as opposed to the franchise's later technical ones. Paramount Pictures and Roddenberry began developing a new series, Star Trek – Phase II, in May 1975 in response to the franchise's newfound popularity. Work on the series ended, however, when the proposed Paramount television service folded. Following the success of the science fiction movies Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Paramount adapted the planned pilot episode of Phase II into the feature film Star Trek – The Motion Picture. The film opened in North America on December 7, 1979, with mixed reviews from critics. The film earned $139 million worldwide, below expectations but enough for Paramount to create a sequel. The studio forced Roddenberry to relinquish creative control of future sequels. The success of the critically acclaimed sequel, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, reversed the fortunes of the franchise. While the sequel grossed less than the first movie, The Wrath of Khan's lower production costs made it net more profit. Paramount produced six Star Trek feature films between 1979 and 1991. In response to the popularity of Star Trek feature films, the franchise returned to television with Star Trek The Next Generation in 1987. Paramount chose to distribute it as a first-run syndication show rather than a network show. <laughs> After Roddenberry Following Star Trek, the motion picture, Roddenberry's role was changed from producer to creative consultant with minimal input to the films while being heavily involved with the creation of Star Trek, The Next Generation. Roddenberry died on October 24, 1991, giving executive producer Rick Berman control of the franchise. Star Trek had become known to those within Paramount as the franchise because of its great success and recurring role as a tent pole for the studio when other projects failed. TNG had the highest ratings of any Star Trek series and became the most syndicated show during the last years of its original seven-season run. In response to TNG's success, Paramount released a spin-off series Deep Space Nine in 1993. While never as popular as TNG, the series had sufficient ratings for it to last seven seasons. In January 1995, a few months after TNG ended, Paramount released a fourth TV series, Voyager. Star Trek saturation reached a peak in the mid-1990s with DS9 and Voyager airing concurrently and three of the four TNG-based feature films released in 1994, 1996, and 1998. By 1998, Star Trek was Paramount's most important property, the enormous profits of the franchise funded much of the rest of the studio's operations. Voyager became the flagship show of the new United Paramount Network UPN, and thus the first major network Star Trek series since the original. After Voyager ended, UPN produced Enterprise, a prequel TV series to the original show. Enterprise did not enjoy the high ratings of its predecessors and UPN threatened to cancel it after the series' third season. Fans launched a campaign reminiscent of the one that saved the third season of the original series. Paramount renewed Enterprise for a fourth season, but moved it to the Friday night death slot. Like the original series, Enterprise ratings dropped during this time slot, and UPN cancelled Enterprise at the end of its fourth season. Enterprise aired its final episode on May 13, 2005. Fan groups. Save Enterprise attempted to save the series and tried to raise $30 million to privately finance a fifth season of Enterprise. Though the effort garnered considerable press, the fan drive failed to save the series. The cancellation of Enterprise ended an 18-year continuous production run of Star Trek programming on television. The poor box office performance in 2002 of the film Nemesis cast an uncertain light upon the future of the franchise. Paramount relieved Berman, the franchise producer, of control of Star Trek. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Film reboots. Kelvin timeline. 
In 2005, Paramount's parent company Viacom split into two companies, the CBS Corporation owner of CBS Television Studios, and Viacom owner of Paramount Pictures. CBS owns the film brand while Paramount owns the film library and would be able to continue the film franchise. Paramount was the first company to try to revive the franchise. Paramount hired a new creative team to reinvigorate the franchise in 2007. Writers Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman and Lost producer, J.J. Abrams, had the freedom to reinvent the feel of Trek. The team created the franchise's 11th film, entitled simply Star Trek, releasing it in May 2009. The film featured a new cast portraying the crew of the original show. Star Trek was a prequel of the original series set in an alternate timeline, later named the Kelvin Timeline. This gave the film and sequels freedom from the need to conform to the franchise's canonical timeline. The 11th Star Trek film's marketing campaign targeted non-fans, even stating in the film's advertisements that, This is not your father's Star Trek. It also would not interfere with CBS's franchise. The film earned considerable critical and financial success, grossing, in inflation adjusted dollars, more box office sales than any previous Star Trek film. The plaudits include the franchise's first Academy Award for makeup. The film's major cast members are contracted for two sequels. Paramount's sequel to the 2009 film, Star Trek Into Darkness, premiered in Sydney, Australia, on April 23, 2013, but the film did not release in the United States until May 17, 2013. While the film was not as successful in the North American box office as its predecessor, internationally, in terms of box office receipts, Into Darkness was the most successful of the franchise. The 13th film entitled Star Trek Beyond was released on July 22, 2016. The film had many pre-production problems and its script went through several rewrites. While receiving positive reviews, Star Trek Beyond disappointed in the box office. Plans for future films remain nebulous. Topic. Corporate ownership Upon Star Trek's creation, ownership was shared by Norway Productions and Desilu Productions. Norway was owned by Roddenberry. In 1967, Desilu was acquired by Gulf Plus Western, and reorganized as part of Paramount Pictures, also owned by Gulf Plus Western. Because of the profit-sharing arrangement—profits split between Norway, Paramount, Shatner, and NBC. Star Trek consistently lost money, and the studio did not expect to syndicate it. Paramount offered to sell its share of all rights to Roddenberry in 1970, but he could not raise the $150,000 equivalent to $967,738 in 2018 offered by the studio. In 1989, Gulf Plus Western reorganized itself as Paramount Communications, and later merged with Viacom in 1994. In 2005, Viacom was spun off as two independent entities by its then owner, Sumner Redstone, becoming Viacom and CBS Corporation. CBS, via its CBS Television Studios subsidiary, retained all Star Trek rights, and Viacom, via its Paramount Pictures subsidiary, retained the feature film library, and the rights to make new feature films. Paramount also retained some video distribution rights to all television series produced by the studio before 2005. However, many home video editions released since 2005, and streaming video versions of episodes, carry variants of the CBS Television Studios logo in addition to the Paramount branding. The exact terms of the Viacom and CBS rights exchange are not known. CBS All Access CBS turned down several proposals in the mid-2000s to restart the franchise. These included pictures from film director Brian Singer, Babylon 5 creator J. Michael Straczynski, and Trek actors Jonathan Frakes and William Shatner. The company also turned down an animated web series, CBS would bring the franchise back to the small screen with the show Star Trek – Discovery to help launch and draw subscribers to its streaming service CBS All Access. The first season premiered in September 24, 2017 and second season that premiered in January 2019. 
A third Discovery season was announced on February 27, 2019. Additional all-access series are under development including one featuring Patrick Stewart reprising his role as Jean-Luc Picard, a Lower Decks adult animated series, and a show centered around the Discovery character Philippa Georgiou. CBS's goal is to have new Star Trek content year-round on all-access. Television Seven television series make up the bulk of the Star Trek mythos, the original series, the animated series, The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and Discovery which includes the short-form companion series Short Treks. All the series in total amount to 759 episodes across the 33 seasons of television. The original series 1966 to 1969. Star Trek, the original series, frequently abbreviated as TOS, debuted on NBC on September 8, 1966. The show tells the tale of the crew of the starship USS Enterprise and its five-year mission, to boldly go where no man has gone before. The original 1966–69 series featured William Shatner as Captain James T. Kirk, Leonard Nimoy as Spock, DeForest Kelly as Dr. Leonard Bones, McCoy, James Doohan as Montgomery Scotty, Scott, Nichelle Nichols as Uhura, George Take as Hikaru Sulu, and Walter Koenig as Pavel Chekhov. During the series' first run, it earned several nominations for the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation, and won twice. NBC cancelled the show after three seasons. The last original episode aired on June 3, 1969. A petition near the end of the second season to save the show, signed by many Caltech students and its multiple Hugo nominations, would, however, indicate that despite low Nielsen ratings, it was highly popular with science fiction fans and engineering students. The series later became popular in reruns and found a cult following. Topic: The animated series 1973-1974. Star Trek: The animated series, produced by Filmation, ran for 2 seasons from 1973 to 1974. Most of the original cast performed the voices of their characters from the original series, and some of the writers who worked on the original series returned. While the animated format allowed the producers to create more exotic alien landscapes and life forms, animation errors and liberal reuse of shots and musical cues have tarnished the series' reputation. Gene Roddenberry often spoke of it as non canon. The animated series won Star Trek's first Emmy Award on May 15, 1975. The series briefly returned to television in the mid-1980s on the children's cable network Nickelodeon, and again on Sci-Fi Channel in the mid-90s. The complete series was released on Laserdisc during the 1980s. The complete series was first released in the U.S. on 11 volumes of VHS tapes in 1989. All 22 episodes were released on DVD in 2006. Topic: The Next Generation, 1987 to 1994. Star Trek: The Next Generation, frequently abbreviated as TNG, takes place about a century after the original series, 2364-2370. It features a new starship, Enterprise NCC-1701D, and a new crew led by Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Patrick Stewart, and Commander William Riker, Jonathan Frakes. Some crew members represent new alien races, including Deanna Troy, a half betazoid counselor played by Marina Sirtis. Michael Dorn plays Worf, the first Klingon officer in Starfleet, alongside Gates McFadden as Dr. Beverly Crusher, LeVar Burden as Chief Engineer Geordie LaForge, the android data portrayed by Brent Spinner, and Dr. Crusher's son Wesley Crusher played by Will Wheaton. The show premiered on September 28, 1987, and ran for seven seasons. It had the highest ratings of any of the Star Trek series and became the number one syndicated show during the last few years of its original run, allowing it to act as a springboard for ideas in other series. 
Many relationships and races introduced in TNG became the basis of episodes in Deep Space Nine and Voyager. During its run it earned several Emmy Awards and nominations, including a nomination for Best Dramatic Series during its final season, two Hugo Awards and a Peabody Award for Outstanding Television Programming for one episode. Topic. Deep Space Nine 1993–1999 Star Trek – Deep Space Nine, frequently abbreviated as DS9, takes place during the last years and immediately after The Next Generation It debuted the week of January 3, 1993 and ran for seven seasons. Unlike the other Star Trek series, DS9 takes place primarily on a space station rather than aboard a starship. The show begins after the brutal Cardassian occupation of the planet Baja. The liberated Bajoran people ask the United Federation of Planets to help run a space station near Baja. After the Federation takes control of the station, the protagonists of the show discover a uniquely stable wormhole that provides immediate access to the distant Gamma Quadrant, making Baja and the station a strategically important location. The show chronicles the events of the station's crew, led by Commander Benjamin Sisko Avery Brooks, and Major Kira Neris Nana Visitor. Deep Space Nine stands apart from earlier Trek series for its lengthy serialized storytelling, conflict within the crew, and religious themes—all elements that critics and audiences praised but Roddenberry had forbidden in the original series and The Next Generation. <laughs> Voyager, 1995–2001 Star Trek – Voyager ran for seven seasons, airing from January 16, 1995 to May 23, 2001. It features Kate Mulgrew as Captain Catherine Janeway, the first female commanding officer in a leading role of a Star Trek series, and Commander Charcotai, played by Robert Beltran. Voyager takes place at about the same time period as Deep Space Nine and the years following that shows N2371-2378. The premiere episode has the USS Voyager and its crew pursue a Marquis Federation Rebels ship. Both ships become stranded in the Delta Quadrant about 70,000 light years from Earth, faced with a 75-year voyage to Earth. The crew must learn to work together to overcome challenges on their long and perilous journey home while also seeking ways to shorten the voyage. Like Deep Space Nine, early seasons of Voyager feature more conflict between its crew members than seen in later episodes. Such conflict often arises from friction between by the book Starfleet crew and rebellious Marquis fugitives forced by circumstance to work together. The starship Voyager, isolated from its home, faces new cultures and dilemmas not possible in shows based in the Alpha Quadrant. Later seasons brought in an influx of characters and cultures from prior shows, such as the Borg Q, the Ferengi, Romulans, Klingons, Kardashians and cast members of the Next Generation. Topic. Enterprise 2001 Star Trek – Enterprise, originally entitled Enterprise, is a prequel to the original Star Trek series. It aired from September 26, 2001 to May 13, 2005. Enterprise takes place in the 2150s, some 90 years after the events of Zephram Cochran's first warp flight and about a decade before the founding of the Federation. The show centers on the voyages of Earth's first Warp 5 capable starship, Enterprise, commanded by Captain Jonathan Archer, played by Scott Bakula, and the Vulcan sub commander T Pol, played by Jolene Blalock. The show originally did not include Star Trek in its name and logo, adding it later on in the show's run. During the show's first two seasons, Enterprise featured self-contained episodes, like the original series, The Next Generation and Voyager. The entire third season consisted of one arc. The fourth and final season consisted of several mini-arcs, explored the origins of some elements of previous series, and resolved some of their continuity problems. Ratings for Enterprise started strong but declined rapidly. Although critics received the fourth season well, both fans and the cast reviled the series finale, partly because of the episode's focus on the guest appearance of members of the Next Generation cast. 
The cancellation of Enterprise ended an 18-year run of back-to-back -back new Star Trek series that began with The Next Generation in 1987. Topic: Discovery 2017 present. Star Trek – Discovery is a direct prequel to Star Trek – The Original Series, set roughly ten years beforehand. It premiered September 24, 2017 in the United States and Canada on CBS before moving to CBS All Access, while Netflix streams the show outside the United States and also provides most of the show's funding. The show centers on the voyages of the Discovery, commanded by Captain Gabrielle Lorca, played by Jason Isaacs, and Lieutenant Commander Michael Burnham, played by Sonqua Martin Green, upon whom the series focuses. This marks the first Star Trek series to feature a first officer as the lead character. The show features the Klingon Tikovma attempting to unite the 24 great Klingon houses, leading to a war between his race and the United Federation of Planets. In development CBS All Access has three upcoming series announced to be in development, two live action and one animated. Patrick Stewart will reprise his role as Jean-Luc Picard in a live action series, and Michelle Yeoh will reprise her role as the Mirror Universe's Philippa Georgiou of Section 31 from Discovery in another live action series. Two seasons have been ordered of an animated adult comedy series created by the head writer of Rick and Morty, titled Lower Decks, which will focus on the support crew of one of Starfleet's least important ships. Additionally, an animated children's series will air on Nickelodeon as a joint venture with CBS. Topic. Film Paramount Pictures has produced 13 Star Trek feature films, the most recent being released in July 2016. The first six films continued the adventures of the cast of the original series. The seventh film, Generations, was designed as a transition from that cast to the Next Generation television series. The next three films, focused completely on the Next Generation cast. Starting with the eleventh film, the movies take place in an alternate timeline with a new cast playing the original series characters. Leonard Nimoy portrays an elderly Spock in these films, providing a physical link to the original timeline. This alternate timeline has been named by CBS, for the computer game Star Trek Online, the Kelvin timeline. Television cast Merchandise Many licensed products are based on the Star Trek franchise. Merchandising is very lucrative for both studio and actors. By 1986, Nimoy had earned more than $500,000 from royalties. Products include novels, comic books, video games, and other materials, which are generally considered non canon. Star Trek merchandise generated $4 billion for Paramount by 2002. Topic. Books Since 1967, hundreds of original novels, short stories, and television and movie adaptations have been published. The first original Star Trek novel was Mission to Horatius by Mac Reynolds, which was published in hardcover by Whitman Books in 1968. The first publisher of Star Trek fiction aimed at adult readers was Bantam Books. James Blish wrote adaptations of episodes of the original series in 12 volumes from 1967 to 1977. In 1970, he wrote the first original Star Trek novel published by Bantam, Spock Must Die. Pocket Books published subsequent Star Trek novels. Prolific Star Trek novelists include Peter David, Diane Carey, Keith DeCandido, J.M. Dillard, Diane Duane, Michael Jan Friedman, and Judith and Garfield Reeves Stevens. Several actors from the television series have also written or co-written books featuring their respective characters, William Shatner, John DeLancey, Andrew J. Robinson, J. G. Hertzler and Armin Shimmerman. Voyager producer Jerry Taylor wrote two novels detailing the personal histories of Voyager characters. 
Screenplay writers David Gerald, D. C. Fontana, and Melinda Snodgrass have also penned books. A 2014 scholarly work Newton Lee discussed the actualization of Star Trek's holodeck in the future by making extensive use of artificial intelligence and cyborgs. Topic: Comics. <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek-based comics have been almost continuously published since 1967. They have been offered by several companies, including Marvel, DC, Malibu, Wildstorm, and Gold Key. Tokyopop is publishing an anthology of next-generation-based stories presented in the style of Japanese manga. As of 2006, IDW Publishing secured publishing rights to Star Trek comics and published a prequel to the 2009 film, Star Trek – Countdown. In 2012, IDW published the first volume of Star Trek, the newspaper strip featuring the work of Thomas Walkington. Games The Star Trek franchise has numerous games in many formats. Beginning in 1967 with a board game based on the original series and continuing through today with online and DVD games, Star Trek games continue to be popular among fans. Video games of the series include Star Trek, Legacy and Star Trek, Conquest. An MMORPG based on Star Trek called Star Trek Online was developed by Cryptic Studios and published by Perfect World. It is set in the TNG universe about 30 years after the events of Star Trek – Nemesis. The most recent video game, set in the new timeline debuted in J.J. Abrams's film, was entitled Star Trek. On June 8, 2010, WizKids announced the development of a Star Trek collectible miniatures game using the Heroclix game system. <laughs> Magazines. Star Trek has led directly or indirectly to the creation of a number of magazines which focus either on science fiction or specifically on Star Trek. Starlog was a magazine which was founded in the 1970s. Initially, its focus was on Star Trek actors, but then it began to expand its scope. Star Trek, the magazine was a magazine published in the U.S. which ceased publication in 2003. Star Trek Magazine, originally published as Star Trek Monthly by Titan Magazines for the United Kingdom market, began in February 1995. The magazine has since expanded to worldwide distribution. Other magazines through the years included Professional, as well well as magazines published by fans, or fanzines. <laughs> Cultural impact The Star Trek media franchise is a multi-billion dollar industry, owned by CBS. Gene Roddenberry sold Star Trek to NBC as a classic adventure drama, he pitched the show as, "...wagon train to the stars," and as Horatio Hornblower in space. The opening line, "...to boldly go where no man has gone before," was taken almost verbatim from a U.S. White House booklet on space produced after the Sputnik flight in 1957. The central trio of Kirk, Spock, and McCoy was modeled on classical mythological storytelling. Star Trek and its spin offs have proven highly popular in syndication and are shown on TV stations worldwide. The show's cultural impact goes far beyond its longevity and profitability. Star Trek conventions have become popular among its fans, who call themselves Trekkies or Trekkers. Quote dot, an entire subculture has grown up around the show which was documented in the film Trekkies. Star Trek was the highest ranked cult show by TV Guide. The franchise has also garnered many comparisons of the Star Wars franchise being rivals in the science fiction genre with many fans and scholars. The Star Trek franchise inspired some designers of technologies, the Palm PDA and the handheld mobile phone. Michael Jones, chief technologist of Google Earth, has cited the tricorder's mapping capability as one inspiration in the development of Keyhole Google Earth. The Tricorder X Prize, a contest to build a medical tricorder device was announced in 2012. Ten finalists were selected in 2014, and the winner was to be selected in January 2016. 
However, no team managed to reach the required criteria. Star Trek also brought teleportation to popular attention with its depiction of matter energy transport, with the famously misquoted phrase, beam me up, Scotty, entering the vernacular. The Star Trek replicator is credited in the scientific literature with inspiring the field of diatom nanotechnology. In 1976, following a letter-writing campaign, NASA named its prototype Space Shuttle Enterprise, after the fictional Starship. Later, the introductory sequence to Star Trek – Enterprise included footage of this shuttle which, along with images of a naval sailing vessel called Enterprise, depicted the advancement of human transportation technology. Additionally, some contend that the Star Trek society resembles communism. Beyond Star Trek's fictional innovations, its contributions to TV history included a multicultural and multiracial cast. While more common in subsequent years, in the 1960s it was controversial to feature an Enterprise crew that included a Japanese helmsman, a Russian navigator, a black female communications officer, and a human Vulcan first officer. Captain Kirk's and Lieutenant Uhura's kiss, in the episode Plato's Stepchildren, was also daring, and is often miscited as being American television's first scripted, interracial kiss, even though several other interracial kisses predated this one. Nichelle Nichols, who played the communications officer, said that the day after she told Roddenberry of her plan to leave the series, she was a big fan who wanted to meet her while attending a NAACP dinner party. I thought it was a Trekkie, and so I said, sure, I looked across the room, and there was Dr. Martin Luther King walking towards me with this big grin on his face. He reached out to me and said, yes, Ms. Nichols, I am your greatest fan. He said that Star Trek was the only show that he, and his wife Coretta, would allow their three little children to stay up and watch. She told King about her plans to leave the series, I never got to tell him why, because he said, you can't. You're part of history. Computer engineer and entrepreneur Steve Wozniak credited watching Star Trek and attending Star Trek conventions in his youth as a source of inspiration for co-founding Apple Inc. in 1976. Apple later became the world's largest information technology company by revenue and the world's third largest mobile phone manufacturer. Topic parodies Early TV comedy sketch parodies of Star Trek included a famous sketch on Saturday Night Live entitled The Last Voyage of the Starship Enterprise, with John Belushi as Kirk, Chevy Chase as Spock and Dan Aykroyd as McCoy. In the 1980s, Saturday Night Live did a sketch with William Shatner reprising his Captain Kirk role in the restaurant Enterprise, preceded by a sketch in which he played himself at a Trek convention angrily telling fans to get a life, a phrase that has become part of Trek folklore. In Living Color continued the tradition in a sketch where Captain Kirk is played by a fellow Canadian Jim Carrey, a feature-length film that indirectly parodies Star Trek is Galaxy Quest. This film is based on the premise that aliens monitoring the broadcast of an Earth-based TV series called Galaxy Quest, modeled heavily on Star Trek, believe that what they are seeing is real. Many Star Trek actors have been quoted saying that Galaxy Quest was a brilliant parody. Star Trek has been blended with Gilbert and Sullivan at least twice. The North Toronto Players presented a Star Trek adaptation of Gilbert and Sullivan entitled HMS. Starship Pinafore, The Next Generation in 1991 and an adaptation by John Mullich of Gilbert and Sullivan's HMS. Pinafore that sets the operetta in the world of Star Trek has played in Los Angeles and was attended by series luminaries Nichelle Nichols, D.C. Fontana and David Gerald. A similar blend of Gilbert and Sullivan and Star Trek was presented as a benefit concert in San Francisco by the Lamplighters in 2009. The show was entitled Star Trek, The Generation After That. It presented an original story with Gilbert and Sullivan melodies. Both The Simpsons and Futurama television series and others have had many individual episodes parodying Star Trek or with Trek allusions. An entire series of films and novels from Finland entitled Star Trek also parodies Star Trek. In August 2010, the members of the Internal Revenue Service created a Star Trek themed training video for a conference. 
Revealed to the public in 2013, the spoof along with parodies of other media franchises was cited as an example of the misuse of taxpayer funds in a congressional investigation. Star Trek has been parodied in several non English movies, including the German Traumschiff Surprise, Period One, which features a gay version of the original series Bridge Crew, and a Turkish film that spoofs that same series episode, The Man Trap, in one of the series of films based on the character Tourist Omar. The Orville is a comedy drama science fiction television television series that is currently airing on Fox, with the same look and feel as the Star Trek universe, created by noted Trekkie Seth MacFarlane that premiered on September 10, 2017. MacFarlane has made references to Star Trek on his animated series Family Guy, where the Next Generation cast guest starred in the episode Not All Dogs Go to Heaven. <laughs> Fan fiction The original Star Trek series is also notable for giving rise to slash fiction, a genre of fan produced in universe fiction where normally non-romantic same-sex characters are portrayed as being a romantic couple, notably, Kirk, Spock, stories. These began appearing in the early 1970s, generally written by female fans of the show. Over the intervening decades, especially with the advent of the internet, fan fiction has become its own thriving fandom. Topic. Fan productions Until 2016, Paramount Pictures and CBS permitted fan-produced films and episode-like clips to be produced. Several veteran Star Trek actors and writers participated in many of these productions. Several products turned to crowdfunding, such as Kickstarter, to help with production and other costs. Popular productions include New Voyages (2004 to 2016) and Star Trek Continues (2013 to 2017). Feature-length productions include Of Gods and Men (2008), originally released as a three-part web series, and Prelude to Axana, whose production resulted in a lawsuit from CBS. Audio dramatizations such as The Continuing Mission 2007 to 2016 have also been published by fans. In 2016, CBS published guidelines which restricted the scope of fan productions, such as limiting the length of episodes or films to 15 minutes, limiting production budgets to $50,000, and banning actors and technicians from previous Star Trek productions from participating. A number of highly publicized productions have since been cancelled or have gone abandoned. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Awards and honors. Of the various science fiction awards for drama, only the Hugo Award dates back as far as the original series. In 1968, all five nominees for a Hugo Award were individual episodes of Star Trek, as were three of the five nominees in 1967. The only Star Trek series not to receive a Hugo Award nomination are the animated series and Voyager, though the original series and Next Generation never won in any nominated category. No Star Trek feature film has ever won a Hugo Award. In 2008, the fan-made Star Trek, New Voyages episode. World Enough and Time", was nominated for the Hugo Award for Best Short Drama. In 2016, the franchise was listed in the Guinness World Records as the most successful sci-fi television franchise in the world. In 1996, TV Guide published the following as the 10 best Star Trek episodes for the franchise's 30th anniversary. The City on the Edge of Forever. The original series, April 6, 1967. A Mock Time", the original series, September 15, 1967. Mirror, Mirror", the original series, October 6, 1967. The Doomsday Machine", the original series, October 20, 1967. Journey to Babel", the original series, November 17, 1967. 111001. The Next Generation, February 1, 1988. Yesterday's Enterprise. The Next Generation, February 19, 1990. The Best of Both Worlds. Part 1. The Next Generation, June 18, 1990. Tapestry. The Next Generation, February 15, 1993. The Visitor. 
Deep Space Nine, October 9, 1995 The two Star Trek series to win multiple Saturn Awards during their run were The Next Generation twice winning for Best Television Series and Voyager twice winning for Best Actress, Kate Mulgrew and Jerry Ryan. The original series retroactively won a Saturn Award for Best DVD Release. Several Star Trek films have won Saturns including categories Best Actor, Actress, Director, Costume Design, and Special Effects. As for non-science fiction specific awards, the Star Trek series have won 31 Emmy Awards. The 11th Star Trek film won the 2009 Academy Award for Best Makeup and Hairstyling, the franchise's first Academy Award. See also Outline of Star Trek Timeline of science fiction List of space science fiction franchises Lists of Star Trek planets Notes <laughs> <laughs>